we're standing here in the middle of a potato field here in Ballinellard in Blackwater and did you, what was it what there was a particular date in which you dug the first boats what was that day 29th a June. A June, 29th of June. Yeah. Yeah. That would always be the first. There was a religious reason, and I think it was to, in those times, the crops would have been different. Maybe the, you know, the fertilizers, the manures was dung that time, and maybe to be later coming on, it's different now. It's a month, everything is a month forward. But it was always the 29th. And would you remember that, Johnny? Oh, God, remember it? <clears throat> we couldn't wait to get home from school to get into the field to pick the spots because we knew we were going to get a dinner that night. <laughs> and if you were lucky, you had a bit of bacon to go with it, or a head of cabbage. Those were the days, yeah. And you'd eat the food, skins and all? Oh, Jesus, skins. If you had a good neighbour, a good farmer's neighbour, when we always had powers over there in Kildare, you were never short of farmer's butter or buttermilk. And you had the spots, and maybe the mother grew a few heads of cabbage in the garden. And we ate, you could, I could say, probably, Equal to Michelin star food today. It was natural stuff. And that's why we were young lads, so we were out working on the land when we were 12 years of age. And then I went away to England when I was 15, but that's another story. And York, <coughs> you know, York and your own father as well, he had that rule as well with the 29th. It was always a sort of a hidden rule behind the scene, like I suppose 29th of June. You even hear today from him saying, like, we never do go until the 29th of June. like. So things have, Johnny said things have changed, everything's a month ahead now, he'd be trying to dig on the June weekend if you could. It's sort of our deadline now today, like, you know, it's a hidden rule today. Yeah, the early spuds are, that's where the money is. Yeah, hopefully yeah. for the June weekend, like, you know, so. Mm. Like that time you probably weren't sowing the crop until Patrick's Day, I suppose, was the deadline for sowing them, whereas we'd always trying to be sown now early February, like this field here was sowed on the 15th of uh, February, like, so. You're again, you're a month ahead on sowing dates, so and that brings them in that they heard there. And you'll take out, uh, there you took out two drills there this morning? That's right, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. We do almost a ton there, just in two drills here in this field today now, so they're a nice, nice crop. And they'll be sold on straight away now? Straight away, they're going to the market now today, yeah, yeah. In the afternoon. But years ago, even Johnny, you were, were talking earlier, we're saying even everything would be pitted. Yeah, they dig the pits in the ground, sure. Mostly the young lads will be digging the pits are about, it depends, three foot wide and six inches deep. And then you went on with your basket and picked up the spuds and women and men and children and everybody. And then you, when the spud, when the, you shape them up into the shape of a V, cover them with reeds if you didn't have good oat and straw, which would be cut a month earlier and they'd be gone dry. And then you put the clay on them and made them up into a little, like a little V, little pits in the field. And then they were covered up and left there until they wanted them. And then you'd open one end of the pit and you'd go down and get your spills out of the field, the whole, right the way through until they were gone. There was no sheds or refrigeration or anything that time. How does that sound to you, Ed? <coughs> completely foreign to you, does it? Yeah, I never heard any of that before. I only heard of putting them into bags and yeah. putting them into the shed and sending them on to markets and shops. and Changing times, yeah. Yeah. It's very different yeah. to now. Yeah. And how did you get roped into foreign? Well, I've been working for Noel there for the last few years, so I just work here nearly every day now. You won't, you won't, sorry now for interrupting there. You won't see many young fellas in this thing today. This chap now would be an exception, and it, uh, he'd be an exception to the rule. He's a great chap to work, and um, he loves what he does, and we're always having the crack, and sometimes when we go out and do the deliveries, we get an old ice cream and have a bit of fun, you know what I mean? But it's good fun. You won't see many young lads doing now, I can tell you that. that. This is, that game is gone, women have gone. Except for Noel's mother, God bless her. If there was a man short, she'd be up on the harvester there in the middle of them. And yeah, and Johnny done it all their life. She had three or four generations of a Cullen family there. If they don't know about spuds, then nobody knows. You know, that's the way it, things go, isn't it? You know, the longer you do it, the more you learn. Every day is a school day, yeah. Yeah, that's life in the potato field. Did you ever hear the old people used to call, call them prates or praties? Praties, yeah. In actual fact, <coughs> there, was a, there was a couple of lads playing an accordion one night in a pub here in Blackwater. Um, this fellow, he wasn't great now at playing the accordion. And somebody said to him, he says, Tommy, what, what was that tune you played? 
<coughs> he said that was the walls of Limerick. Tom and the man Miley said to Tommy, that wasn't the walls of Limerick, he said. He said, I'll tell you what that's called. He said, it's called the sow's trot to the Prairie Pit. That was what I would crack like that used to go on in the fields and the pubs after taking out the spuds. So the spud was all, you refer to the spud several times a day. But it was our diet. People went from Wexford here to Scotland to pick spuds 200 years ago. They died over there. And they're still going, well, they're not still going today, but Donegal and up around that neck of the woods. So they all go over there to do the spuds. Did you go from Wexford to pick the spuds? They did. <laughs> they did. I know people who went. And aunts and uncles of mine who went to Scotland to pick the spuds. And they went over there and they slept in sheds in the field and cow sheds and hay sheds and every other shed. But they come home with money that they would never, never get anywhere else. And it was, it, well, it was, it was rough and tough. But they, they got their money to carry on for the rest of the year. And I always said them were the good old days, but I wouldn't want them back. But there were tough times, yeah. People had it rough, yeah. But that's life, progress then. 17th of March for your second crop was always said. You had to have them in by the 17th of March for the Keras Pinks. But as soon as you can get them in now, that's the way it is. Yeah. Pa Paddy's Day. Paddy's Day. We See have you. a few Keras Pinks sold over here. We, we saw a few just to keep for ourselves for later on in the year when the Queens are done, just for our own keep yeah. for the winter. Day. When will you take them out in October? Yeah, September, October. Yeah. They're actually, as you called it, in a Giro corner down here in the far side of the field. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah as we were yeah. talking about a few minutes ago. Yeah, the Do you Giro's. know what one of them is? Yeah. So you, you know how Giro gets, Johnny? I do, yeah. What's the Giro? There's a lad that could creep into your ear <laughs> if you're sleeping in a shed. <laughs> That's in my week. Well, the Giro is the same thing, no? <laughs> no, okay no. then. Okay. There's a, now, there's, there's a Giro and a Kiro. A uh, Gearog is a Gearog is the corner of the field, yeah. and a Kirog is an old Irish word for a uh, uh, Neary. Yeah, so it's Kirog then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, how I come to know about the Kirog was I had my old uncle Paddy and Granddaddy. They were always talking about old things, and they were like Lauren Hardy. They were fun all the time. And some woman anyway met up with this man, and they were getting married. Mammy said to him, "Did you, Paddy? Did you hear that Wiley Murphy was getting married?" Oh, God bless us and save us, says Paddy. And where did he find the woman? She, she says, God, he says, oh, she, I don't know where she found her. They're getting married anyway a couple of months' time. And Paddy went, oh, God bless us and save us. Mickey said, there's matches for key rugs. <laughs> so that was an old one, an old, an old saying of years ago. Matches for key rugs. Mat there's matches for key rugs. It means a, a key rug will find a partner. Well, that's an old saying. It's that one key rogue will find another. They always say that. Yeah, I've heard that saying over in the West of Ireland. <coughs> here as well, and yeah. over there in Monarig, yeah. that's where I used to hear a lot of that stuff. Yeah. You had the Bryans, you had Johnny Stafford, you had Pat Stafford Cullen. They used to sit in what they call a little summer shed, summer house. It was an old, uh, it cut off the top of the ditch and they put a bit of timber up on it. And they'd sit up there on top of the ditch and they'd talk there in Devens for hours and hours and hours. That's how people communicated years ago. You know where the gate going into the gravel hole field is? That was always there. Mm. Every evening there. And then in the summer, the little old, where the little old council bit of a yard is there. The road was different that time. They used to bring up the dance board and the crowded lads come up in the car in and play there sometimes of a Sunday evening at Powers Cross. When I was a child, yeah. yeah. But there you are. That's the way life was in those days. The good old times are gone forever. <laughs> Yeah, I love talking about him, but there you are. Da 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 da